Hi, I'm Eric. I'm Immersive Media Lead at Facebook ER, ARVR. Thank you. Uh, our team focuses on immersive media. It's a general term that we use to refer to all of the forms of media one might create and distribute in VR headsets. Um, I'm also a content creator in this space. Uh, I'm obsessive about end-to-end -end workflows. Uh, Abesh, Asad, and I are gonna spend the next 45 minutes with you talking about immersive media creation, distribution, and discovery. So when we think about immersive media in the greater VR ecosystem, we like to put ourselves in the shoes of creators. And this actually, this comes very naturally. Um, I spend a very large percentage of my time creating content with the goal of figuring out what works best in the headset ecosystem. And so here's just, here's one way that uh, we uh, categorize the things that creators might care about. Uh, so the first is the story. This is arguably the most important part. It can be challenging to tell an effective story in immersive media. And it isn't that we don't have stories to tell. It's that we're working in completely new forms of media. And we haven't had hundreds of years of developing techniques like we've had when working in flat media. Next is the production. We are wrangling subjects and locations. We're waiting for perfect lighting, recording clean audio. And on top of that, we're working in new formats. We have new cameras, com constantly evolving workflows. Um, and this is challenging as well, uh, but the results and the reason you're all here um, are that the results show so much promise that we can't help but push forward. And finally, distribution. We make content, and we also want as many people as possible to see what we've created. So we spend time thinking about things like evangelizing and marketing to the right audience. And this happens at every scale. Some of us might be sharing content to small groups, and others might be trying to get their productions into an upcoming film festival. So the thing that we should not be spending time thinking about is trying to get content into a distribution platform that makes it difficult to share. So we recognize that it has not been easy to distribute immersive media in VR headsets, and it's also been challenging to find good content to experience. So some creators have developed standalone apps just to get immersive video into the Oculus ecosystem. Obviously, to, to do that, you have to actually build an app. This takes time and resources. This also puts media publishers in a situation in which content is competing with things like AAA games to get attention. So in what is currently a game-centric platform like Oculus Quest, this can be a challenging way to get your immersive media in front of a large audience. So let's take a step back for a moment to remind ourselves what the term immersive media has meant for the past few years. When we talk about immersive media, we refer to video and other forms of narrative storytelling that break beyond the boundaries of traditional rectilinear content. Now, a lot of the industry refers to this entire category as 360, but what we've really been talking about are video formats with the following attributes. The first is field of view. So 360 or 360 degrees is a full sphere around a viewer. 180 would be half of a world around a viewer. We also define the number of eyes. So this would be one for monoscopic or flat imagery, or two for stereoscopic imagery, which is often called 3D. Even though it's really only 3D because our brains interpret the two images as being 3D. And speaking of stereoscopic 3D, there has been a lot of energy lately behind VR 180, or stereoscopic 180. So this is literally two 180-degree fisheye images side by side. Now, it's easier to produce than stereoscopic 360, and because it's forward-facing only, the storytelling techniques are familiar. It's similar to how one might tell a story in traditional media. Now, stereoscopic 360 is much more complicated. Now, this is essentially a computer vision problem. It requires complex stitching and a lot more production resourcing to make high-quality content. So what I've been talking about so far has essentially been about the evolution of video. Looking forward, we are already starting to see that definition, the definition of immersive video, expanding further, incorporating real 3D content. Uh, and we've seen this in things like 3D photos for Facebook, and also we've, we're seeing exploratory pushes into volumetric video, 
interactivity, and user agency. Now, we're not gonna talk about those things in this session, but they are worth paying attention to as we go forward. So you have heard now, you've seen in the keynote, that we are making it easier to discover immersive media by launching a couple of new media products. The new Oculus TV will be a place users can go in headset to find and watch media. Now, Oculus TV won't be just about traditional rectilinear video. It's not your old TV strapped to your face. It's a place where you will also be able to find and watch the latest in, immerse, in immersive media storytelling. We talked earlier about the challenges about publishing immersive media into the VR headset ecosystem. In the past, this meant building an app or uploading content into the Facebook timeline. And this is why we're so excited to launch Oculus Media Studio, a publishing pipeline and asset management system designed to ingest, encode, and push content straight into Oculus headsets. Oculus Media Studio ingests your immersive media and generates high quality encodings that target VR headsets. It offers features like rectilinear trailer support for sharing onto Facebook and support for external sharing and marketing. So every piece of uploaded content will have an associated media description page and also a standard public-facing URL. So uploaded content is discoverable both in Oculus TV uh, and can also be featured in Oculus Home. Now, media in the VR ecosystem needs to exist in a virtuous cycle of creation and consumption. This virtuous cycle has been brought up repeatedly over the years at OCs. Uh, after content is published, it needs to be pushed into a consumption flywheel of discovery, watching, and sharing. And finally, analytics give insight into what kind of immersive media resonates the most with viewers so creators can adapt for their next projects. So Oculus Media Studio and Oculus TV serve as complementary and essential parts of this creation, consumption, virtuous cycle for immersive media. And now I'd like to introduce Abesh, product manager for Oculus Media Studio. Hey everyone, I'm Abesh, and I've spent the past few years in building tools and pipelines for immersive media at scale and try to understand the evolving needs of the creator community. One recurring theme over the past few years has been the challenge of optimal distribution in the right format for the right services and for the right people. I'm here to talk about how we are beginning to tackle some of the burning issues that have plagued the creator community that prevents the at scale and seamless publishing of content, which costs money, time, blood, sweat, and tears. Oculus Media Studio is a brand new asset management and publishing system that provides, for the first time, an incredibly easy and effective method to publish your immersive video content to services that you choose in a way that works for you to share, to understand your audience, and create a presence and brand on the platform. Now let's unpack all of that with a use case that if not all, most of you might be familiar with. You spent the past four months working on an immersive 3D 360 video, which is 18 minutes long, and is optimized for viewing in headsets. You have painstakingly ensured that immersion is a key component of your story. And in an ideal world, your entire audience would be in possession of VR headsets. However, the reality is that you will need to optimize for views so you have to make compromises on where you publish, which is probably going to be a majority of 2D surfaces for mobile and desktop consumption. And a fraction of your viewers may or may not see the headset version. Perhaps you even built a single video app so that you could try and point people to install and watch the content in its best form. Oculus Media Studio is built for VR-first consumption. This system allows you to publish directly to the headset for easier discovery in multiple places. Now, awareness is key, too. So Media Studio does not compromise or sacrifice one surface for the other, and instead offers you the opportunity to distribute a version tailored for optimal viewing for each surface. This means you can upload a rectilinear two-minute trailer version for the 18-minute 3D 360 piece, 
and choose to distribute the trailer only to Facebook newsfeed on your page through the same flow and post the full 3D 360 version to headset. What's the fun part? These two assets are now linked, which means that for users on Newsfeed, they can simply choose to save the video on Facebook, but the original 18-minute 3D 360 piece actually gets saved uh, to Oculus Quest and Oculus Go headsets. This is just one way we are trying to give creators a reason to push immersive consumption to immersive platforms and use widely accessible 2D surfaces for promotional and awareness activities. Oculus Media Studio was built for VR-first publishing and consumption. Now, this means we are raising the bar of what is and what should be acceptable for a comfortable viewing experience. This means a minimum of 4K resolution, but things like video fidelity, compression quality, shakiness, and motion content in the video also matter. Over time, the content inside headsets is ranked based on visual fidelity and comfort, so the end user has access to much higher quality content which they can watch in headset, be inspired, and be amazed by. We're now making it a lot easier to share and consume immersive content. When you upload a video in Media Studio, a related media description page gets automatically generated with the option to save the video to the user's VR library in Oculus Go and Oculus Quest headsets. This is a URL that can be shared and viewed over the web. Imagine uploading a video to Oculus Media Studio, grabbing the Oculus link, sending it uh, over Messenger or sharing it to your Facebook timeline, social channels, or even making a short link that you can talk about in a podcast. This link will be openly accessible over the web, and for logged in users, allow them to bookmark it to their VR library just with one click. You will also have the option to post the video as an unlisted post, and then share the URL around for limited or custom distribution should the need arise. At all points in time, you are still directing users to consume the content in headset in all its glory, rather than a suboptimal version on a 2D surfaces just because there was no other way to share. Let's talk about building a presence on the platform. Think about all the content that you own and have published to multiple places since you started dabbling in the fine or dark arts of immersive storytelling. <laughs> Until now, there was no way for either yourself or for users to associate all the content that you've worked on unless they discovered your portfolio. For video creators, if the content was published only in headset, this poses a completely different set of challenges. We are building artist profiles that allow you to start building your own presence on the platform. Users will have the ability to follow an artist, and you as a creator would have the opportunity to list all the content that you own, and each piece of content comes with its own media description page. So for a user to seamlessly save to the headset for later consumption becomes sim uh, really simple. No more back and forth between different storefronts or trying to find a video in a myriad of store apps. Building a presence, a following, and a community is key to establishing a positive two-sided relationship between creators and consumers. Publishing content without any means of understanding your audience is usually a fruitless exercise. How do you know if the last video, which was 18 minutes long, actually resonated with audiences? Oculus Media Studio is launching with two key metrics that will go a long way in understanding performance. The average watch time for a video and the number of views in headset. For creators who use both 2D and VR publishing options, they can see both newsfeed and VR metrics side by side, which would allow them to not only tailor the main content, but also start understanding parts of the publishing funnel which was invisible for so, uh, for so long. Over time, look out for more metrics that are made available in Media Studio that help you understand your audience and elevate your content to the right people. With Media Studio, we are giving creators an opportunity to connect with their audiences on platforms and surfaces that matter. Being able to exclusively target headset audiences for VR consumption and to 2D surfaces for distribution touches on the best of both worlds. Media Studio solves one end of the problem for creators. Creators will now have the opportunity to push the highest quality, 
immersive content for VR-first consumption. So now you have a pipeline that allows you to publish to a headset. But once that's done, what do you do? To share more light on the other end of the creator-consumer value chain, I would like to hand over to Asa Chait, product manager of Facebook AR VR Media. So we're really, really excited about what Oculus Media Studio can do to make it easier to take content that you've created, immersive content, and get it into a publishing pipeline. But that's definitely just one side of the equation. To pay that off on the other side, we're really excited to announce a brand new update to Oculus TV that will be coming later this fall. Now, before we get into talking about Oculus TV, I want to see if I can take you guys back to a moment. Imagine the first time you were putting on your headset. Uh, some of us have been in the game for a long time, so we have to dig pretty deep into the archives to remember that moment. But we actually sit down with people on a regular basis who are having that experience. And what we ask them is, what do you expect to find inside this headset? And the answers that they give us actually resonate really well with the kinds of things that we do as immersive creators. They talk about being transported to a faraway place or they talk about having an experience that they couldn't conceive of trying in the real world. And it's up to us to pay off this expectation that they have once they put on their headset. So in order to do that, we have to do two things really well. First, we have to make sure that it's incredibly easy when they do put on that headset for them to discover the amazing stories that exist on platform. And then second, once they've found those stories, the process of experiencing them has to be so easy so smooth and so compelling that they want to come back and do that over and over again. We've done this historically on platform in a number of ways, primarily through the Oculus feed that you see when you put on your headset. Now that feed has to serve a wide variety of purposes. For some people, when they put on their headset, they know exactly what it is that they want to do. So the feed's role in that case is actually to get out of the way and let them get into the game that they wanted to play or the app that they wanted to use. For some people, they actually might want to get introduced to a new app that could be super compelling for them, but they didn't know about. And the feed needs to get them to the store and let them download that app and start using it. And some people are amazed and delighted by immersive experiences in headset, and the feed's role is to introduce them to those experiences. And those are the people that we'll focus on here. There's a couple of different kinds of experiences that are discoverable in headset today. Uh, some of them are traditional TV experiences that you can consume inside an immersive environment, like Facebook Watch. Some of them are the kinds of immersive stories that we've been talking about that uh, are immersive videos, interactive experiences of a certain kind. And sometimes it's personal content that people bring onto their headset themselves or from one of our streaming partners uh, inside of one of our experiences. Uh, what we've done historically is we've taken each of these things and we've actually separated them out into individual apps. And by doing that, we were able to craft specific experiences for each of those pieces of content. Uh, traditional rectilinear TV has always been accessible inside of Oculus TV. Immersive stories uh, have a home in Oculus Video. And personal content is accessible inside of Oculus Gallery. What we found, though, with these three individual separate experiences is that when people get through a piece of content, they don't think to themselves, what's the next thing for me to consume that's just like the last thing that I consumed? Instead, what they ask is, what's next? And we realized that by separating these into three different silos of experience, we were actually making it harder for people to find that answer to what's next. And it's not just true of these three apps, it's true generally across the platform. The more we put people into specific experiences for content, the more we find that it's harder to get to that next bundle of value that they could be finding. And that's why we're bringing all of these together into a single updated Oculus TV experience. So Oculus TV is going to be your one-stop shop on platform for narrative experience discovery and a wide variety of narrative experience consumption as well. When we were building this product, we really went back to basics, and we did a lot of research on how people interact with media, not just in VR, but on 2D surfaces, like the web or smartphones, or even outside of software platforms entirely, like on your TV. And the concept that we saw over and over again coming up was the idea of a cadence, 
the idea of a continuous flow of content. And by putting everything together in one place, we're able to do a much better job for people who come into Headset to ensure that every time that they come back, there's something new to them. It may not be necessarily absolutely new or new to the universe, but it's something that they haven't seen before. And by doing this, we're really hoping that we can build an intent and a behavior where people know that if they put on their headset and they come to Oculus TV, they'll find something compelling to consume. The second thing that happens on our platform, of course, we're an app platform, and we have a wide variety of experiences for which people have built an affinity for. So we want to make sure that if this is going to be that one-stop shop for narrative experiences, it's easy to get back directly into the experiences that they know about and the apps that they care about. So that will also be accessible from this experience. The third pillar in Oculus TV will be access to your personal content. And as immersive creators, one of the common behaviors that we have is putting content onto your headset, iterating on it, making some changes, putting a new piece of content on. And so we wanted to make sure we treated that experience really well. So that will also be accessible inside of Oculus TV. By putting all of these things together in one media-focused discovery and consumption surface, it opens up an opportunity for us to really hone in on some media-specific customer journeys, one of which we'll talk about here for our roadmap. Now, imagine someone's put on the headset. They've found something incredibly compelling. Uh, they've watched it, and they think to themselves, I really like what I've seen. I'd like to see more from this creator will allow people to follow creators inside of Headset that they want to see more content from. Once they've followed them, if that creator goes and publishes a new piece of content, for example, through Oculus Media Studio, they should get an alert. They should be told whether they're inside of Headset or out. They should know that there's something new for them to come back to. When they do come back, they can watch it right away, or they can save that piece of content for later by downloading it. And when they do download it, they will download the original high quality content so that they can consume that experience, they can see that story in the original fidelity that its creator intended. And then once they've downloaded it, once they've watched it, that's an opportunity for them to amplify that story that they found. They can share that with a friend. This is really, for all the algorithms that we work on, really the most compelling recommendation that exists is one that comes with the personal credibility of someone that you know recommending something to you. And this is an opportunity, once that recommendation is made, for somebody new to go through this entire loop and start that process all over again. So this kind of self-sustaining loop is the kind of thing that we can really focus on building now that we have a dedicated media and storytelling discovery and consumption experience on our platform. So we're really excited about Oculus TV as a distribution surface freeing up creators to think about how do we just craft the most compelling story possible and then produce it at the utmost quality. And together with Oculus Media Studio, we think that these two products really form two halves of the immersive media ecosystem that we need to build. Now, one of the things that we're fond of saying at this company is we're 1% done. And that's very much the case here. We're going to continue to build value into this ecosystem everywhere we can find it. And we're looking forward to working with you, the creators of these amazing stories, to understand how to prioritize and where to build that value. Uh, we have some time for questions. So if you do have any questions, there's microphones on the right and left up here. So feel free to jump up and walk up to a mic. We'll also be available in the speaker pavilion right at uh, 5.15 together with the other members of the media team. I'll leave us with one last thought uh, before I turn it over to questions, which is think back to that moment again where you're in your headset for the first time and you're putting it on. We've been thrilled with what Quest is doing in market, and we're coming up on our first holiday season. And we wonder, we ask ourselves all the time, how many people are going to have that moment this holiday season? How many people over the next year, over the next five years, are going to have this new to VR moment of infinite possibility and unimaginable wonder? And how are we going to pay that off for them? That's the challenge that we are super, super excited to be solving together with you. And I'm honored to be working with an amazing bunch of people who are super passionate about that problem as well. So with that, I'll bring Eric and Abesh back up to stage. That's been the three Ds of immersive design. Thank you guys very much. Immersive media. Uh, 
so you mentioned that this is kind of a hub for immersive video and interactive video. So my question is specifically about interactive video. Uh, as a developer, if I have an interactive video in which the user can actually make choices and do things within the, the narrative experience, the narrative live action experience, would this be a home for that type of content? Yeah, so one of the things that came up earlier today was the idea that the various pieces of our ecosystem are at different levels of maturity. So interactive experiences in particular are one of the things that we're continuing to prototype out to understand how they work. They absolutely will be discoverable in Oculus TV, and I think as we're figuring out the medium, as we're understanding how that exactly gets built out, they may not be consumable here, but you'll be able to find them. So this is the definitive place to discover narrative wherever it lies on the spectrum of interactive versus non-interactive. Afternoon. Um, I think I speak for a majority of content creators who are in the audience today. Um, a great presentation on both Oculus TV's full integration, but I'll just cut right to the chase. Um, is there any uh, plan of some sort, short-term or long-term, for monetization on this platform? I'll take this one. Uh, so I, I think uh, that's, of course, where we want to go, right? We want this ecosystem to be self-sustaining for sure. There's no doubt that we are very early in that process. What we're focused on right now is trying to build as much concrete value as we possibly can. And if we build that value, if we find a reason for people to come back more and more often, that's where we want to build to. So we don't have anything specific to share in the short term on monetization, but I assure you it's in all of our minds and it's where we want to be so that we can sustain the kind of amazing work that creators do. Since I've got such a big line behind me, I'm going to ask two questions. <laughs> um, first off, when is this coming out? So, Oculus Media Studio is available today. Today. Yeah. But is it still in the beta, or is it? Is it? <laughs> it's available. Available. So you can go up to the URL and you can start using it. Great. Great. Yeah. Great. Great. Now, do you guys see this as a product that will replace a lot of? So, like, there's a lot of professionals in here, people that are making products that are planning to be sold on the Oculus platform, but they're immersive media, they're linear. Is this going to replace that? Is there still a plan to have a, like a niche for those products that they're gonna be apps that come out? Uh, what are your guys' plans in terms of that? I can talk a little bit sure. about that. Um, you know, so this, you know, we're very much in, right now, the immersive media playback mode along with discovery of things that are more interactive and other things like that. Um, but there will always be a place for exploration in other parts of the system. This is not meant to collect everyone into one format and one style of content creation. And so and this is really designed to allow people to come to, to explore as much media as possible. Um, but if you have a crazy idea that involves video but has a lot of interaction planned, new forms of media, um, that is essentially what the whole platform is for. Great. Thank you. Do you have a, a second question? Um, for, so you, you have this, this uh, uh, platform now where we can take our video and, and code it uh, so that it's well optimized to run on the Oculus ecosystem. If a, a creator like myself wanted to take that, uh, could I possibly upload a video, have it encoded and be optimized for Oculus, but then take that and, and that, uh, that uh, that encoded video and then use it in an app that will be also used on an o Oculus, but more as an interactive app, not for Oculus TV. Does that make sense? Well, it's, it's not not today, like as, as we launch, but it's, it's an interesting idea. Uh, do you mean still in the Oculus system or somewhere else? As well, well be, yeah. I mean, I, I'll just be very personal. Yeah. I, I, what I'd like to do is be able to take you know, 6K or 8K video have it be optimized for, uh, for Oculus so that I can have it be part of an actual interactive app. Right. Because right now, it, this does encode video correct. for the Oculus, for, right, for, correct? So I'm wondering if that encoded video can also be used outside of Oculus TV. So right now, uh, with Oculus Media Studio and the rest of the ecosystem, it's, it's all just one funnel in the sense you use the Media Studio, it gets shown on Oculus Home, Oculus TV, uh, but there is no reason why in the future uh, we cannot work with the needs of the creator community uh, 
Media Studio itself is a result of one of some of the most asked questions in the past three or four years. And if there's a need for building more interactive experiences by staying inside uh, such a publishing pipeline, we can uh, definitely start uh, thinking about needs and building them, but not right now as, as we speak. But I, I guess I can add that we do have recommendations that are published on the, the blog, the creator's blog, yeah. that talk about optimal encodings for headset. They're in, you know, they, it's, a, it's also a moving yeah. target because we're continuing to do research in, in, that, uh, in that area. Um, so, and we can talk about this after as well. Um, there is still a little bit of a, a gap between what is available, planned to be available at scale for streaming and download versus what is optimal for local playback in the ecosystem. And so th those are really still two different parts of what we're trying to solve. Um, the good news is that for local playback, we have very good answers about what works best for, our, uh, for the chipsets in our headsets, and so we can point you to that. Yeah, it'll all be on documentation to be shared and consumed. I'm gonna bounce this over yes. to this side real yes. quick. Hi, um, so if I understand then through the media studio, you can create content and then upload it. Um, the question becomes like, is there a filter for it? How, I mean, will there be, you know, beer commercials on it here? Or will it be, what if I have a product I wanna promote on the app store? Uh, how do you, how do you, mm, filter in a way that uh, it's, it's uh, meaningful. Yeah. Uh, we, I mean, overall for the Oculus system in general, we do recommend that the content be meaningful and uh, you know, something that users will derive value out of. If we also uh, have the community guidelines, for example, and recommendations that, that we always suggest. Uh, again, to be, uh, just to take a step back, uh, we're not talking uh, timeline of Facebook profile level of uploads uh, yet. What we're doing is we are starting to build a tool that allows you to start uploading good quality and high quality content. So the filters that you're talking about that exist are on a fidelity level. So if you try to throw in uh, 1080p video, Media Studio will not allow you to publish that. Content-wise, that's something that will be evolving over time based on what people also end up watching, uh, what will be allowed. So it's, it's a little be a moving target as well in terms of the ecosystem as it develops. Because right now, it's very much difficult to publish in headsets. It's much easier to publish on 2D surfaces. We are trying to build a bridge to get us to that scale where we can you know, continue having a good inventory of content. But, but my question is less technical, more in terms of the theme, thematics of the content, right? Like, again, yeah. will I be able, I have two questions in particular. Like if I'm yeah. creating an app, right, that I wanna sell on the app store, uh, can I make a video that here that promotes it so that people can download it in, in the App Store, perhaps? You know, there's crossing a the line a little bit of commercial of the commercial or promotional side, and then on that more on that ex, on the extreme of that would be perhaps Budweiser wants to upload a video about about drinking beer. And I'm just wondering where do you draw the lines of what is possible to upload and what is not possible to upload, not in technical terms, but in terms of content. So content still has to pass our integrity standards. So when you do upload content, you cannot just upload content and it, it goes unfiltered. Uh, in terms of curation, I think that's a different discussion that you, you can also shed some light on. There will be always the picks, like even on Oculus Video right now, uh, you see editor's picks, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, but we do use, uh, systems in place to make sure that content integrity and community guidelines itself from a content perspective on a technical fidelity is adhered to. It'll also be mentioned very clearly in Media Studio before you start using it, so you'll know the things that we would encourage and things we would not. Asad, what do you want to? I just want to acknowledge that beer commercials have been some of the most incredible narrative experiences over the last two decades. Um, but uh, I, think, I think this is very much something that we're learning, right? We're so early in the process. Uh, I want to definitely clarify that we're not trying to disintermediate any app stores or preclude any experimentations in apps, uh, as Eric mentioned. But to your question, like, we're learning together, right? So this is something that we'll have to have a lot more conversations on that we can go into a little bit deeper, maybe in the pavilion. Okay, thank you. Hey there, Colin Posley, Deep Woods. I run a nonprofit uh, trying to prime the pump for classrooms to adopt all the great stuff that you all are doing up here. So first of all, I love the innovations and bringing uh, 
giving us more uh, ability to create. Um, and from the classroom perspective, I have a question um, in terms of creating more or having more administrative controls um, over the content that students would have access to. Um, I'm wondering what sort of features you're planning on implementing in the software to create more sandbox um, to make sure that uh, that content is um, appropriate for the classroom environment. Thanks. I think actually a lot of your question is answered almost directly by some of the enterprise work that's happening. And that might be a better place to go down, that might be a better path to go down for solving this particular need. Uh, but I'm happy to have more of that conversation with you. Okay. Hello. I'm curious on the Oculus TV side, if who is the person curating what comes through? Is it an actual person or people or team? And how do we connect with them? Yeah, so we're putting together exactly what that process looks like right now. We're definitely going to apply some level of algorithmic understanding of the content. To Abesh's point, there is a quality bar in terms of just resolution and shakiness that we will just not want to put in front of people in headset. And there will be some level of editorial insight and understanding what is made for VR, what that programming calendar looks like. So nothing to announce on specifics yet here, but we will put together a process for that. First, thank you so much for uh, all the in great information. Uh, I, I did not really pay close attention if I asked a question that already been answered, so I uh, uh, apologize for that. Uh, but my first question is, as a current exist content creators, uh, with the, we already have so many content on Facebook uh, and have different format, how is, this, how is this app or new feature gonna help organize our current content into an organized playlist and whatnot, is the feature there to help us? So I can speak for Oculus Media Studio. The pipeline itself is brand new. So you are, yes, you're looking at the answer of having to organize and start your library again. Okay. But Oculus Media Studio does allow you to connect your Facebook page. That's what we were talking about. Yeah. So you can upload, uh, if it's VR friendly content, VR first content, you can use Oculus Media Studio for both VR as well as Facebook cross posting. So, but it is a brand new pipeline. At this point of time, there is no automatic import. Uh, so to speak, of all the content that you have already published on your page. So what you're saying that we had to upload all the content we created two years ago back on the pipeline to, to use the... So there is, so the way I look at it is uh, some of the content uh, specifications and restrictions would have also evolved. Uh, and uh, it, it's, it's a good way to actually check if the content is now still VR comfortable, VR first, you know, VR friendly mm -hmm. at the same time. But yes, it's, it's a separate pipeline. It's optimized for a different use for existing creators. We're giving them the opportunity, not replacing your existing pipeline that, hey, maybe if this is what you care about, if this is what you want to start exploring, here's a tool which actually does both. But it did not exist three years back when you started your page. What about yeah. views? Those video, like, like, I know most of creators here already have like content millions of views on Facebook. Yeah. It is immersive, it's rarely produced. Is those views gonna transfer it? And, and <laughs> how you gotta, you know, I mean, and Facebook views everything, like that's how we got discovered anyway. Yeah, that was, that was part of one of my slides, right? It's you have to optimize for views. Uh, every content that you have pushed and you have published on Facebook, that is all untouched. This is merely a new funnel that also allows you to, or in fact, its primary purpose is to publish to headset first. Your page on Facebook will not be affected because you start using this tool. You can connect and start using from today, for example, to push, uh, but all those views will remain on the page and the presence that you've already built on the channels that you have. Okay, last question, very technical question. Uh, nobody asked it yet. Uh, so, mention of the pipeline. So, uh, is this why now for creator, like maybe for high-end creator, can they start about ProRes and then the transcoder gonna transcode everything and push it on Facebook? I mean, sorry, push it on Oculus and make it look good? Or what, what is actual codex that the encoder gonna take in to help us to make the video look great? So for Media Studio, the video specs are published in the documentation. So okay. right now we are still going to go with uh, the standard H.264 and MP4 containers, but that's something that we will start building. We started with that pipe. Uh, we're putting a bare filter of 4K. Uh, anything lower than that will, will not be accepted. But that's a good question. So when you're looking at you know, other codecs that will be accepted by the system, you know, I know you're talking about ProRes, aren't you? And, oh, and for example. Okay, yeah. No. Uh, but yeah, so right now, uh, you can check the tech specs for more details, but we're starting with H.264 and, and MP4 containers to begin with. Okay. I think we have time for one more mm -hmm. question. We will be available in the speaker pavilion as well, 515, but 
We'll take one last question, and then we have to um, quick take one. our time. Okay. Uh, okay, so if you were a band and you made a music video VR experience for your song, would this be Oculus TV be the place for that, whether you're just a band that can make that or you're Beyonce with like a full hour music video? Yeah, is Oculus TV the place for music video VR experiences? Yeah, so Oculus TV will absolutely be the place for our audience to discover these kinds of experiences. And whatever means you choose to distribute that experience, whether it's an app or whether it's a video that you upload to Oculus Media Studio, we want to make sure that the mass of people that come into headset and do come into Oculus TV today, which is a huge percentage of our population already, we want to make sure that it's easy for them to find it. So the short answer to your question is absolutely yes. Yeah, and I think it's, the, it's important to, to clarify that Oculus Media, we've talked about Oculus Media Studio on one side and Oculus TV on one side, but Oculus Media Studio is one way to get content into Oculus TV. And Oculus TV is going to be a media discovery surface for all sorts of, of narrative storytelling in headset. Okay, with that, thank you guys so much for the questions. Thank you so much you. for the time. Okay. I'll say one last time, we'll be in the speaker pavilion at 515. Thank you.